Hello, welcome to another Manga Spotlight. So this is going to be the first video of my new style of doing Manga Spotlights. Uh, anyone who hasn't seen the uh, the video that I uploaded a while back, basically one of my videos was hit with a copyright strike from a Japanese company. And uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's like really nothing I can do about it. The email is basically like a throwaway email. Uh, and I really don't want to get into like a legal thing with Japan because I don't know how the rules are different in terms of copyrights between that country and this one So I'm just gonna bite the bullet and take the 90 days um, hit uh, Anyways Because of that I'm sure you guys maybe have seen all the re-uploads I've done of pretty much all my manga videos And for those who haven't uh, Basically from now on I'm no longer gonna show any actual images from the manga that I'm gonna be spotlighting other than promotional images just because I really don't want to risk hitting uh, another copyright strike because I, I did some research and it appears that like Japan has just been basically going crazy with copyright strikes which is really weird because I try to go out of my way not to spoil anything like I basically kind of set up the the premise and the story of the series and then I leave it like that so you guys can you know experience it for yourself plus I tend to pretty much review stuff that has not been translated or officially licensed in America. I guess it's basically like fan translations. So it's kind of like you're hitting me with the copyright strike for a series that no one outside of Japan is ever going to look at. It just doesn't make any sense, but whatever. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, this is Demon Tune. Uh, this was actually recommended to me by a viewer named King J. And uh, it's by Kodama Yuki who's the uh, mangaka for Blood Lad, which was also a really good series. Now, unfortunately for Demon Tune, um, this series got axed at, I believe, issue 20, chapter 20. And uh, as far as I can find, it's only been translated up to chapter 6. So you might be wondering, why am I doing a spotlight on a series that's basically dead? <laughs> Um, cause this, it was a good series and I don't know, maybe, maybe if there's enough of, um, I mean, my channel is really small, so it's not going to be through me, but maybe someone might see this and then someone else with a bigger channel might decide to give us some love. Maybe eventually the, the translators will decide, you know what, let's just, let's just do the whole 20 chapters. Um, but anyways, this is basically a action adventure fantasy drama. Uh, the basic premise is uh, in Wizard City, an encounter between a ninja and a fairy begins a new legend. Bloody fights, demons, and fantasy creatures are just some of the things that await our two protagonists. A new and fantastic adventure begins. That's the uh, official description for it. Uh, as you can see here from this image that I'm going to be showing, so our main characters are the uh, boy on the right with this uh, katana and the little fairy at his knees. Um, the boy is uh, Koyu. The boy's name is Koyu Kimura, and the fairies is Fran. So the basic story is that we take place in uh, Wizard City, and we have Fran being kidnapped by a bunch of drug dealers and they take her uh to this shady part of the city um in this building called uh it's like the torture building i forget what the official name is but it's um basically a nightclub but underneath they basically do like tortures and stuff like that for like mobsters and things like that uh and at first fran thinks that they want to use her for drugs um because one of the things that they do is uh you can mix fairy dust with cocaine to like make it even better <laughs> and more addictive and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, the, the series isn't like for kids, uh, even though it has like a lot of like Peter Pan uh, themes and stuff like that. There's like drugs and violence and gore and things. Um, but that's what she assumes that they want her for. But eventually they uh, she realizes that they're, they constantly bring in this kid who they want her to heal over and over again. And then she finds out that basically this kid has um, this information about this scroll that they want. And they're basically torturing him to the point where he like he almost dies. And then they uh, have Fran heal him back to normal. 
that way they can torture him again so that he'll spill the beans on where this uh this um scroll is but he refuses to to give up the information and eventually with her help he ends up breaking out of uh of this um nightclub and during the fight he starts like slashing up these baddies and um uh, friends like you know you're butchering these people and he's like nah they're not gonna die from this and it turns out that the the people basically are demon tunes which is where the name of the series comes in and a demon tune is basically a human that has had demonic cells injected into their body with the use of technology and what happens is it kind of gives them supernatural powers or demonic powers but the more they use their powers the more their humanity they lose and they not only lose it mentally like they start becoming more and more beastly and feral but they also start becoming more and more monstrous physically and uh there's this uh there's just basically like this kid in a like white tuxedo who uh seems to be really rich might be like the the, the leader of this city or something he, he has like a very high power um high status in this city uh i haven't gone far enough because like i said it's only gone up to chapter six of the official translation of the uh, fan translation so i don't know much about him but he's after this scroll and he has the higher uh he hires this guy named uh boogeyman and Boogeyman is pretty freaking crazy. Like his powers that basically he um, he suicides himself. Like he blows himself up. He's like a suicide bomber. Only he constantly comes back to life. I don't know if he has like multiple bodies or if it's just when he blows up, his body pieces itself together. It doesn't really ever officially say. But basically he can blow himself over and over again and not die. So either he has a bunch of clones or he's just able to regenerate himself. Um, and this is kind of like the main baddie of this series so far. Anyways, it turns out that uh, Koyuki Maru and his dad come from a clan of ninjas. And they were sent on this mission to give the scroll to the MBI. And the MBI is basically the FBI, only they handle like magic cases so stuff that deals with um demon tunes stuff that deals with fairies and stuff like that anything supernatural they kind of handle it and uh somehow during this the uh, delivery they get ambushed and uh koyukimaru believes that someone in the mbi is basically a traitor because no one had the information on this scroll except for him his dad um the leader of the ninjas and the MBI. So him and his dad split off. He has the scroll. He's hidden it somewhere. And basically his dad's parting words were to meet up with him in the clock tower. So he's trying to get to this clock tower to meet up with his dad. And there's a little bit more there, but I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to spoil it. Um, but yeah, it's basically just about this journey with uh, Koyuki Maru and Fran who... Friend, like they decide to team up even after escaping. Um, I guess Fran feels sorry for uh, Koyuki Maru, and Koyuki Maru feels like indebted to Fran for helping him out. So they have like this partnership uh, where they're basically trying to find the clock tower, and then eventually they're trying to find his dad, and then eventually they're trying to basically find Boogeyman and the people who ha uh, who attacked him and his dad. And uh, yeah, you have like some of these other characters. Uh, the one you see with the gas mask in this image, that's Spooky Man. Obviously, the guy all the way on the right is uh, Koyuki Maru's dad. Uh, the lady with the big knockers <laughs> is Alex. She works for the MBI. And the um, smug looking kid is uh, Shika. He also works for the MBI. The dude that you see with the fork, that's the uh, the dude with the white tuxedo uh, going after scrolls I was telling you about. And then the kid right in between them is the son of a uh, mafioso who uh, was basically in charge of torturing Koyuki Maru in order to get the scroll. And yeah, that's as much as I'm going to say in terms of the plot. Uh, the artwork is really good. I mean, I like it. It's very stylized. What you see here is kind of what the art's going to be inside, only in black and white, obviously. If you guys have read Bud Lad, 
it's going to be that kind of style. So it's kind of like a stylish sort of manga, but I don't know. I, I really enjoy it. I really like, uh, I really like uh, Kodama Yuki's art style. Um, the writing is really good. I, I really enjoy it. I'm actually just really sad to see that it got axed pretty quick. I don't know. It's always a shame like when series with so much potential just don't get to like fully like show what they can do you know um like i did uh, a series on uh, i did a video on uh black torch which is really good and i got axed after I, I believe like 20 or so chapters um there was another series the name escapes me um but basically it's about this guy who can like he his hobby is like making like little dolls like little puppets and then he basically uh, has these powers where he like wears like this bear puppet suit, and he like fights like demons that are invisible and stuff. It's like a really cool series. I might do a spotlight on that one of these days. But that one got axed, so that one got rushed real quickly. And there was another one that was also really good, where basically this guy kind of teams up with this fox spirit, and um, she basically kind of like they they're almost kind of like fused, almost like Naruto style. And they have to fight demons and stuff like that. It was also a really cool series. That one got axed really quick. And the the ending is just really fucking confusing. Because there's like a 20 year time skip. Halfway through the final chapter. It's just it's just really weird. But uh, it always just saddens me. When stuff just gets axed really quickly. But uh, yeah. The story is really good. Characters. Uh, I'm enjoying them. Uh, Koyuki uh, Maru. Is very. What's the word I'm looking for. He reminds me a lot of the main character from Kimono Jihen, the uh, the ghoul, uh, where he's very, he's not very talkative. Um, he's very kind of blunt, and I don't want to say naive because he's not stupid, but he he's just one of those where, um, he's not very emotional. He's not very talkative. He's very like uh, subdued. That's a good word to use. He's very subdued. Uh, Fran is like at first I thought, oh man, she's gonna be like one of those like talkative like noisy like bulma like characters like bulma from the you know the beginning like of dragon ball but she's not that at all uh she's actually very she's intelligent and she's very help uh helpful when it uh when it comes to helping uh koikimaru and she's also not she's not annoying like, she, i actually like enjoy her character like she's not my favorite character in the series but she's like up there like she she's not i don't find her like really like a negative aspects of her i don't find her like really like annoying or anything like that like i expected her to be in fact if any of these characters are annoying it would actually be shika the smug looking kid he actually comes across as the most annoying character in this um but friend is actually like really likable character alex is kind of what she appears to be um if you expect her to kind of be like takes no shit just kind of does her own thing from her image that's kind of her um but yeah the characters are pretty interesting the writing is again this is good the translation is actually not that bad i would say it's probably like on the higher end uh from like other stuff that i've read this was translated by uh whim subs i'll probably leave a link to uh to their website if they have one um in the description down below but um they've they did a pretty decent job with the translations uh there might have been like a few moments that are kind of not the greatest, but other than that, uh, it's not like some of the other series that I've read where it's almost like they basically just took uh, Japan, ran it through a Japanese English uh, translator, and then just copied that and pasted it. So it's like, yes, this is English, but the sends are like nothing grammatically makes sense, and it's very, very hard to make out what the hell you're talking about i've seen that in a lot of uh a lot of series which kind of sucks because <laughs> it's almost like i'm already reading a foreign language it's like nothing I, i'm reading english but i have no idea what's going on but uh you don't get that here the translation is actually pretty damn good uh and i already talked about the artwork the artwork's really good as well yeah this is actually a pretty good series uh this is definitely like something that like if it ever got officially licensed and became like an ongoing thing or had more chapters and then because i heard that basically the ending was really rushed the ending seems to be disappointing i guess to the people who read the the raws 
uh, for anyone who doesn't know what a raw is, I'm, I'm sure you guys do, but just for the few people who don't, a raw is basically an original Japanese um, scanlation. So basically what they do is they take the Japanese uh, manga pages or whatever, and then they scan them, or if it's online, they just basically save them, and then they um, edit in you know, English words after it gets translated. But uh, RAWs are basically the original with Japanese text and dialogue and stuff like that. Anyways, I guess from the people who have been checking out the RAWs, it has a very kind of disappointing ending, or at least not a very fulfilling ending, which is really a big shame. But yeah, it, it just it sucks that this got axed real quick. If it didn't and it got officially licensed and stuff like that, this is definitely like a series that I would have supported because I, I enjoy it that much. It's only six chapters, but it was a damn good six chapters. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please tell me what you guys think. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. Uh, what do you guys think of this new format of me just basically showing one page? I would love to show more, but I don't know. Just call me paranoid, but... I really just don't want to risk getting hit with another copyright strike. I basically, my channel's been hit with two copyright strikes since it started. One was uh, a Marvel employee hit me with a copyright strike because I gave his issue a bad review. And then um, my, uh, my other copyright strike was just recently, and that was for showing images for a series that is not officially licensed and there's no way you can read it in English other than fan translations, which doesn't make sense, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't want to risk anything. So I'm just going to be showing promotional images that way. Like if anyone tries to hit me with any more copyright strikes, I can just be like, Hey, all I'm showing is, is official <laughs> promotional images. You can't hit me. You, you can't strike me with that. So yeah, I don't know, unless you guys know any workarounds. It seems to basically just be luck. I, I know people say I go and show a couple of images. I've only shown a couple of images. Uh, erase the dialogue bubbles, maybe. But it's, it's like, why why would that matter for something that hasn't been officially translated? You know, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to do other than just showing the one image. I, I figure maybe this... This would be better than just showing like my logo and just talking over everything because that's another thing I was thinking of doing. But yeah, hopefully you guys are okay with this. So this is basically going to be more of a, um, I guess, a podcast format rather than a video format. Sorry about that. But anyways, I hope uh, that's okay with you guys. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video regardless. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below. Uh, subscribe if you're on BitChute, uh, like if you're on BitChute. I also have a Minds.com, but I don't really use that because most of my videos tend to be above 15 minutes. But if they're under 15 minutes, then they'll go on Minds.com too. And I have a Twitch for anyone who's interested in watching me play video games. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any recommendations for series, please let me know. And I'll catch you guys next time. Later.